this is the part I might not have to seal right. All right, we are here in New Orleans. Hurricane Katrina is approaching rapidly. Category four. We're packing up oh, the cat. Come on, man. She made it out. Come on. We've never evacuated for a hurricane before, but we're evacuating for this one. Yeah, they're not happy about it, but neither are we. All right, so it is now six o'clock in the morning. We left about 5 a.m. and the cats had only had one little accident. We both smelled something and we're like, uh-oh. That's right, I had to clean out the cage. Girl Scout training comes in handy for things like this. Did you want to stay home? I guess the great thing about the hurricane evacuation is the panic heard on the radio. This is not a Betsy, people. This is worse than a Betsy. The National Hurricane Center is telling us it's not going to change course. You may see a little wobble, but it, they say it's coming right on at us, and you don't want to be here for a four or five. Thanks for putting the fear of God into me. All right, it's 6.30, heading out of Hammond, heading up north to Jackson, Mississippi, and on beyond to Memphis. Who knows where we'll end up? But you notice they have established contraflow. I've never seen this before. I've only heard about it. It's kind of spooky. Traffic is going north on both sides of, the, of this interstate. I don't know how many hours it's been, four, five. We're finally enough away that we're not in the path. We've decided just to pull over now, or not now, but in about an hour to try to get a room. We don't want to be too far away because we want to get back to defend New Orleans, man. So, so we made it to Winona, Mississippi. Got here about 10 o'clock. Found a hotel that, that had a room still available. The Relax Inn. And so we're going to be relaxing at the Relax Inn. Jackson. As you can see, we have the cats set up with food. Who knows how long we'll be here because we don't really know if New Orleans is even going to be there anymore if Katrina hits it. They said it was a Category 5 hurricane now, which is as strong as they get. So now we begin the process of just kind of hunkering down, waiting, riding it out, forging a life together, whatever. Um, trying to tune into the news and see uh, what's happening in New Orleans. Can we go back? When can we go back? What, what is there anything left to go back to? Hello, and welcome to Jay and Beyond the Rocks. I'm Jay. This is a TV program, an independently produced TV program that I've been co-producing since 1992 with my friend B. We used to make this TV show in an old basement in Bloomington, Indiana. There we are on your screen. That's uh, me on the left, Jay, your bartender. Editor B is on the right. He mixes the video. He mixes the video. Vi vi video, video, video. He mixes the video. I mix the drinks. So now I'm living out here in Montana with my wife, Day, who you can see there in the background. Hi. Editor B is down in New Orleans nowadays, or at least he has been. You know, there's been this problem down in New Orleans that you may have heard about. So we're gonna call him and see what's up with him. I have this headset telephone, but as you can see, it's kind of broken. So, Assistant Day? That'll hurt coming off. I don't okay. care. This is kind of like jackass, except with mixed drinks. We need <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, th I think that'll probably stay. At, at least enough for the the initial phone call. All right, so we're we're dialing editor B here. Hopefully, we'll reach him. Hello. Hello. Hey, Jay. Hey, how's it going? All right. You're very faint. Am I? Well, uh, I'll try to speak up a little. Of course, it could be the fact that I've got a telephone duct taped to my head. Yeah? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what's, uh, you're having some technical uh, issues? Yeah, I kind of look like an idiot, especially now that she's actually affixing antenna to my head. So this is just getting worse and worse by the minute. But, uh, of course, it pales in comparison to some of the stuff that you've been going through lately. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in fact, uh, right now, um, I'm, I'm sitting here in, uh, in like, this nowhere space. 
Wow. Uh, Where? It's just blackness, utter blackness surrounding me on all sides. Really? Um, I've been told that it's actually the uh, Studio A of the Community Access Television Station in, uh, in the Monroe County Public Library here in Bloomington, Indiana. But I I'm, really, I'm really not sure. It's just... Really, you could probably be anywhere, huh? I could be anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Because um, I'm really, like, nowhere. Yeah. Well, so what's up with that? You, you, uh, you obviously are not at home in New Orleans. What happened? Well, uh, you saw the video earlier of our evacuation. Uh, of course, Hurricane Katrina. It's the first time we ever had evacuated, and uh, I guess it's a good thing that we did. Uh, that was a while back now. Mm -hmm. And I've been living uh, kind of, you know, out of a suitcase here in Bloomington, Indiana uh, for the last few uh, months, really, but, I, but then running back to New Orleans a few times. And uh, it just, it sucks. We, we may, it may be a good point uh, at which to, um, to uh, point out that it's been about two months now that we're taping this. This is kind of after the fact. Yeah, time has a way of, of uh, playing tricks on you, especially when you're in this kind of... Um, in between land. Yeah, in this yeah. postmodern video space. That we're, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, uh, by the time that anybody sees this, uh, hell, it's probably going to be 2006, if not mm -hmm. later. Uh, who knows? Who knows where I'll be or what the, 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 the status of what's going on with uh, New Orleans and the Gulf Coast. I mean, it just seems to change yeah. uh, day by day. Shit, um, my phone is beeping, and I think it may mean that it may die on me, which is kind of unfortunate since I've kind of stuck some stuff to my head, and I may not be able to get out of this, but... Um, uh, maybe we should cut to some video here. All right. Okay. All right, look what we have here. My father-in-law just brought this by. It appears to be a check from the... Department of the Treasury. So I'm going to open this up. Because I think I know what this is. Yes, indeed. This is a check for $2,000 from FEMA. You see that? Mm-hmm. $2,000. So look, we're coming out ahead on this deal. What so did you far, have to do to earn that money? All I had to do is have my home destroyed by a hurricane. That sounds easy. So we're here at Big Red Liquors in Bloomington, Indiana. As you can see, I've cashed my check from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. So I've got all this cash money now. It came actually with a, a special notice. You are also agreeing to use these funds only to meet your disaster-related needs. You're gonna have some needs that only Big Red Liquor can fulfill, you heard? Jesus Christ, I, I can't believe the, the checkpoint that they've set up here. Not only do you have to perform, to provide two forms of ID, but you actually have to answer questions about them as well. Oh, God. Jesus. There's been, there's almost the first incident. So do you like wine? You like beer? You, you like hard liquor? Because I can tell you, we got all this money from Uncle Sam and it's burning a hole in my pocket. I'm going going down to Toad Holler. Isn't this a great bottle? Look at this alligator back, huh? That is wonderful. It's That's great. Art. Less than 30 days old. Do we, do we got any rye whiskey here? Okay, so we got a fancy bottle. We got the Jim Bean. Old Overholt. I think they all look it's awful. Got a picture of a white guy. So you know it's good. Yeah, he doesn't seem like he would own slaves. He seems like a nice guy. What do you think, uh, Michael? Give us your honest opinion. Let me just close my eyes. <laughs> and just start. <laughs> What did I get? What did I get? No, you got old overhaul. Oh, okay. He looks like a Quaker. I know how to piss off the common taxpayer. Do you want to get the rest of this money or what? Let's go buy some crack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's blow the rest on some crystal meth. Yeah. Okay, so, so what's it like being back in Bloomington then? Well, I mean, in some ways it's been very nice. I've never wanted to leave Bloomington in the first place. I always kind of liked this community and, and this city. Uh, been a, it was a nice place to live before when I lived here, and it's been nice to be back. And of course, Christy's from here, grew up here her whole life. Uh, so in some ways, you know, she was also glad to be back. Uh, we wish under different circumstances, but you know, there's definitely a lot worse places you could be than Bloomington. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot to recommend it. And yet, at the same time, I kind of feel like I haven't been able to really enjoy being here, or to really, even to really even feel like I am here 
because my mind and, and my heart and my thoughts are just like 800 miles away, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, and the whole time I'm here, I feel like kind of just in limbo. Yeah. Like I'm spinning my wheels. So, so in fact, uh, I was eager to, to head back down to uh, New Orleans, which I did, with a friend, Michael Homan. So as you can see, Michael is loading up the van because we're re getting ready to head down to New Orleans. It's looking pretty full in there, but I think we're going to be able to fit almost everything in here. The Dinty Moore beef stew. Yeah, well, we always have room for one more Dinty Moore beef stew. So we're on the road in this van that's packed to the roof with uh, all kinds of relief supplies for New Orleans. It may seem almost foolish to be headed south at this point because Hurricane Rita is in the Gulf of Mexico right now. It, uh, at, at least one point, was even bigger and more uh, ferocious than Hurricane Katrina was. So that's the first rain we've seen, the first Hurricane Rita rain. We've decided to try to head on down to Mandeville, Louisiana. We've had an offer to hole up there, and uh, we'll be a lot closer to New Orleans there. They're not letting people into New Orleans, we understand, across the Causeway Bridge, although I do have the press pass. Maybe we'd be able to get in, but probably not. Yeah. So um, we'll check back in a little bit. So we spent last night in Mandeville, Louisiana. This little subdivision here is just kind of cleaning up from Hurricane Katrina. As you can see, it's been uh, well partially flooded now from Hurricane Rita. So we're going to try to sneak into New Orleans. They're not really letting people in. They don't want people to come back yet. But that's not going to stop us. I looked up from a car that was flying. A beggar crawled from his tomb. He washed with the waves back into his grave. You're alone, kid. Go back to your room. Jump from the car in mid city. A break in the clouds let me through. The sky was a lake, and the kids were afraid. Nameless, contagious, and due. We're in Orleans Parish. We're in Algiers, which means that nothing can stop us now. Okay. And so at last we made it to the Common Ground Relief Clinic, uh, a free clinic that's been established here in the Algiers neighborhood, and we're delivering these medical supplies from Bloomington, Indiana. This clinic was started to help with the relief from Hurricane Katrina, but there are plans to try to make it into a long-term free clinic for this neighborhood, which would be just a great thing. Oh, and you may be wondering, well, what organization are these doctors and nurses who are working here with? No organization, no organization whatsoever. And they were here well in advance of the Red Cross, well before any of the governmental relief organizations. They were just people who wanted to help. And so they did. Hey, so we're gonna mix a drink here. This drink is gonna be a hurricane. So right now I'm just uh, milking some limes. This is kind of like a d disaster in the making, you know, at any point this could all just topple over and get shit everywhere. And be all sticky. Yeah, which is kind of like what's going on down in New Orleans. So. Um, Hopefully, we'll be able to avert disaster, but I do think we have enough limes milked at this point. So I've measured out eight ounces of this lime juice that we've created here. The next thing I'm going to do is add two cups of this passion fruit juice. Now we need eight ounces of orange juice. We're getting close, folks. We're so close, I can smell it. The last thing we're going to add is some grenadine. This is something that uh, if you've ever hung around a bar very often, you probably seen it. Heck, probably, somebody's probably even thrown a bottle of it at you. If you. So what you got there? That's some light rum? This is the light rum. Wow, you're even measuring. Aha. Uh -huh. A trio of beverages for yourself and myself and our first party attendee. Really? I'm the first one? Yeah. Yes. Other than the, the dogs and stuff. Now we're on to the dark rum. This is 100% fine Jamaican rum. Alright. Same amount? Ounce yeah. and a half? I don't know how many of these hurricanes I'll be able to withstand. Well, I bet the people in New Orleans feel the same way. All right, let's do this. Here we go. Hurricanes. Ah, so this is the oh yeah the the, uh, the old rock stirring technique. Yes, exactly. Stick your finger in it. Stick your finger in it. Oh, a cherry. Ah, uh, yes. Now you should try one. 
It's not half bad. Really? You might want to try a stirring technique. Yeah, so stick your finger in it. Yes, yeah. stick huh. stick your finger in it. Excellent work. I don't know um, how many of them. Can we get a pronouncement? Uh, pretty good. Unexpected. Yeah, I could. Yeah. I could deal with it. You this. could drink that? Yes. Stick, right. stick, 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 stick your finger in it. Yeah, it is. Sorry. You gotta look through stick your finger in it. Okay, yeah, I'm looking. Stick your finger, finger in it. it. All right. So here's to all the suffering people in New Orleans. You know, down in that area of the country, there's this long tradition of celebrating rather than having these uh, terrible, awful funerals like the rest of us Protestant Americans normally have. I think that it's kind of appropriate that we're celebrating and raising some funds for um, the folks in New Orleans and raising a toast. The hurricane. Wow, now I would just pronounce that as distinctly potable. Mm. It's good. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> yeah. Right on. Good wicked stuff. Yeah. It's kind of strong, isn't it? Yeah. Could you focus on the cheeks that are really beet red? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's my not nose is too. It's not a lighting effect or makeup. <laughs> we don't do that on this show. So, oh my God, two fists in it. Yeah. Rock you like a hurricane. So actually, I'm going to take you in here. Well, actually, you're still in this disembodied space. Um, although I suppose that you could probably put yourself up in the corner of the screen. Oh God. Did you hear what? that? Uh, yeah, I've been hearing some weird squeaks and, Wheeling? yeah, and squealings yeah. and beeps and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I assume that's from your... Uh, it's strange a, headset contraption yeah, that you duct tape to your head. Me. Yeah, so at this, uh, at this party that we were having, it was actually a hurricane relief party of sorts. We asked people to bring some money uh, to support Common Ground, this group. We collected some money in this box right here. Um, and as you can hear, it's actually still in there. We keep meaning to send it, and we will send it. Um, unfortunately, this disaster is lasting quite a while and isn't over yet. Yeah, clearly, those any kind of donations, contributions would be very much welcome. Yeah, well, uh, there's their address on the screen, actually, and uh, we would encourage people to send money as well. CommonGroundRelief.org, actually. Uh, check out the website. They've got a list of medical supplies that they need and also just kind of more common supplies that people can find. And, of course, any doctors or nurses who want to get involved in the relief effort are more than encouraged to do so. Yeah. Well, um, so obviously that wasn't the only thing you went down there for. You also went down there to see your own house. Yeah, and that was something. We're rolling down my street, coming up on my house. No, it hasn't burned down yet. Okay, so we're at my house in mid-city New Orleans, which was flooded during Katrina. It's my first time back, and we're gonna try to get inside. It doesn't smell too good, but we do have mold growing in here already. I think we should open the fridge and check it out. We left some frozen salmon. Oh God. In there, it's been three weeks. Should I open it? No, no, no. <laughs> no <laughs> you should have seen the look of panic on his face when I see it. Let's go out on the back deck. See what we can see. Oh, this avocado tree died. It's still green. You can see the water level pretty clearly. About, what, right there, you think? Yeah. It's about chest height. Pretty clear. Yeah. I think that air conditioner is happening. All right, we're going to go downstairs. It's going to be kind of dark, so you may not be able to see too well. Let the sun shine. It's really nasty. It flooded here about chest deep. Ooh. Doesn't smell too good. Just, ugh, God. It didn't seem so bad when we were down here earlier. What the fuck was that? Good Lord.
Well, it's uh, after being in there a while, we really started stirring up the mold, and the fresh air feels a hell of a lot better. It's depressing seeing all your shit all fucked up like that. God damn. Jesus Christ. That's uh, some brutal huh? shit. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it is, uh, it's depressing. It's like a bad dream, really. I just kept wishing I would wake up from it, but, uh, you know, uh, apparently it's real. So now we're going to head over to Mike's house. And our first order of business here at Michael's house is to try to capture Oot, his daughter's pet sugar glider. It's been in the house for a few weeks now, a couple weeks unattended. Hopefully it's still alive and hopefully we can catch it. And if you don't know, a sugar glider is almost kind of like a flying squirrel or something. I, I've never heard of or seen one before, but... Here's a stocking cap. This is some great television right here. Animal Rescue New Orleans style. Say hi, Oot. Oot! Well, Oot's cute. That's why Clipso named it Oot. He just thought it was Oot, short for cute. Oh, that is great news. Okay, come on in here. A mission of mercy. But they're keeping the beer cold somehow. So uh, we were wondering how they kept the beer cold, and then uh, some of the New York Fire Department guys showed up with some bags of ice, and I tried to videotape it, but they they really didn't want me to videotape them because because they said that this was kind of you know uh, on the sly. We don't want to get them in trouble, but I don't think anybody would blame them for bringing some ice so they can keep the beer cold because that's important. Well, so, um, gosh, uh, at this point, what, what's next then? I, I mean, I suppose that uh, you all are kind of still stuck in limbo in Bloomington. Is the, do you have a plan at this point? Yeah, you know, um, uh, it's about 860 miles, 830 miles, depending on what route you take from Bloomington to New Orleans, from New Orleans to Bloomington. Driving back and forth, it really sucks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a long a long drive, uh, about 13 hours, wow. uh, and I've made it several times. Yeah. Because after the the trip that we showed you video of, I went back down again, uh, solo, and spent about two weeks finishing cleaning out the house. I mean, we dra dragged all those flooded possessions out. Michael Homan helped me a lot with that. I 
Really appreciate it. Oh, hey. Michael and I have been cleaning out the house. As you can see, we've got all that junk piled up there. That's all my shit. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's pretty much uh, destroyed. The whole process of getting this stuff out was really nasty and smelly and gross and dirty. So much so that we couldn't even videotape it while we were doing it. It was just not possible. So now we're doing the last thing we're going to do here today is actually spray some bleach. I almost sprayed it right on the camera. I'm going to spray some bleach around in there because bleach is supposed to kill the growth of a lot of types of mold and fungus. Then actually I gutted the lower floor of our house, tore out all the, the walls, mm -hmm. sprayed it down with a bleach solution. Right now we've just been letting it air out and kind of dry out, um, to, you know, ho hoping that the mold doesn't uh, take over the house and, yeah. and so forth. And um, uh, we're planning to head back down there, hopefully for good, actually next week. By the time anybody sees this program, of course, uh, hopefully we're already down there. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, obviously it's, it's hard to, to get the house fixed up from 800 miles away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I suppose that it, it's starting to feel like we're wrapping things up here. Oh, yes. We, we, we really should. Yeah. Well, we're, we're uh, out of time. Yeah, exactly. I guess I need to disassemble this thing that's stuck to my head. My phone didn't die, which is kind of nice. No, but it did uh, beep all the way through. Yeah, it beeped all the way through. Hopefully it uh, has has pleased those people who have been watching this show, because uh, it's probably audible. Ow! Oh, shit, this thing's stuck to my head and my hair. Okay, well, I should probably go, because now I'm all tangled in my um, telephone. Well, that's good television. Yeah. Have a good one. All right, thanks. Uh, yeah. Wish us luck, because we'll need it. Yeah, same to you. Bye-bye. Bye. Cultural biblical metaphor because um, in ancient Israel in the Iron Age they would talk about complete destruction and how there was no hope at all. But some of the prophets mentioned that there's hope coming out of the remnants of olive trees with little suckers like this, where you could destroy an entire olive crop or all the all the plants in agriculture, and still, out of what seems hopeless, things like this will grow out of the ground and uh, try to show people that. Everything seems lost, but there's a little bit of hope. Oh! Ow! Ah! Ah! Boy! That was worth it.